welcome back with another video on our channel yes ma'am yes sir if you are new to the channel thank you for clicking on this video i hopefully you will enjoy this video and watch this video all the way through if you're a consistent supporter thank you again for clicking on this video and hopefully you can watch this video all the way through as well if you don't know what to do give this video a thumbs up like this video up subscribe to the channel turn that post notification bell and comment down below throughout the whole video so i can talk to you all right so today we got some secrets about elvis that you know that you might not have known now who knows if all these are true there's a lot a lot a lot of elvis fans down there out here and i know you all will let me know if it's true or false all right so i'll get a lot of this information from you all somebody told me to watch this video because they was like you know you're doing a little too much elvis you should really get to know you know some some more stuff about him so i got told to watch this video they said i'll be surprised so let's see i don't know let's see um with that being said let's get into it video number 10 germaphobe while speaking to jonathan ross in a 2015 interview priscilla presley revealed that her late ex-husband was terrified of germs and would take his phobia to the extreme she claimed that he even refused to use anyone else's silverware which even included the ones at high-end restaurants she said that because of his secret germophobia he never liked to go to other people's homes to eat because he would have to take his own silverware and that would man off rip ain't nothing wrong with that ain't nothing wrong with that at all a lot of people are germaphobes um and you you know they may portray some people may portray they're super clean you know we clean this we clean that like he said you can go to a high-end restaurant that don't mean they be cleaning their utensils how they supposed to clean it so him bringing his own or him being skeptical ain't nothing wrong with that and then especially going to other people's houses we don't know what they be doing over there we don't know at all what they be doing so ain't nothing wrong with that at all often cause quite an uncomfortable situation as you could imagine quote and he didn't like drinking out of cups that other people had drunk out of even restaurants or other people's homes so when he drank he would drink where the handle was knowing that no one would ever drink at that side although this information is not widely known priscilla says elvis has been that way ever since he was a child she believed that he just didn't like to put his mouth where other people had put their mouth especially with cutlery and dishes which is definitely something most people wouldn't have known about the star number nine like hopefully if he was that way about his food and drink man hopefully he was that way with the women too you know what i'm saying think about it now if you don't want to put your mouth on the cups where everybody else put their mouth you don't know where that lady's mouth being you feel me younger women in her book elvis and me priscilla presley wrote that she just turned 14 when she met elvis presley who was 24 years old at the time and already an international superstar despite the scandal they started an intimate courtship that lasted seven years before they eventually married in 1967. now the age difference is creepy on its own but it becomes even creepier when you compare that to what linda thompson wrote in her own memoir thompson who dated elvis after his marriage to priscilla ended was also very young and inexperienced at the time in fact he allegedly told her quote i want to preserve you for as long as you need whatever he meant by that it just sounds super icky elvis reportedly took advantage of his power to manipulate young impressionable fans whenever he went on tour joel williamson who wrote a historical book about elvis claimed that two years before he met his future wife the star took a group of three girls with him on tour for the purpose of quote pillow fights tickling and cuddling number eight his vanity <laughs> fame is a terrible what? <laughs> drug that often pushes stars into the oddest methods of trying to stay thin and beautiful. Linda Thompson wrote in her memoir that Elvis's obsession with being slim would drive him to bizarre measures to keep the weight off, including an alleged two-week period of sedation. That's exactly what it sounds like. Elvis mainly slept all day except for brief periods where he woke up long enough to go to the bathroom and eat a small portion of food before being sedated again and going back to sleep. She also claimed that he regularly did crash diets on just 500 calories a day she also exposed to secret about and you know what's sad i feel like people who not even famous do that you know what i'm saying just because we're so stuck on our looks and weight and it shouldn't even matter it shouldn't matter at all and people think when they do that it's healthy that's not healthy at all like it's all about balance you know i know it's hard to put down some things and you know be consistent with eating healthy but dang why cut yourself off or why like starve yourself why but why go to the extreme you know but social media and entertainment life that's a it's a tough world 
about why he constantly wore shirts with high collars. Apparently, he did it to conceal his neck, which he actually hated. She wrote that the whole reason he wore the trademark style was to keep his, quote, skinny little chicken neck hidden from the public. Then at age 40, Elvis allegedly opted for a facelift. Quote, there what? has been speculation through the years that Elvis has his eyes done or some other mystery procedure, but that mini facelift was the extent of his plastic surgery. Well, it seems like his ex-wife was really intent on revealing a side of him that was incredibly vain. Number seven, pet chimpanzee. This one is really messed up. Billy Smith, who was a member of Elvis's entourage, openly talked about how Scatter, Elvis's pet chimpanzee, was essentially used as a party favor that they trained to harass women. It said that oh. the chimp would often look for women at parties and grab onto their clothes. According to how do you train a monkey to do that? That's sad. Just to get a woman? That's that's sad. That's sad. Like, you're always, bro. You ain't got to do all that. You feel me? Like, you ain't got to do all that. But I heard having pet monkeys uh, in general are fun. But I don't know. Like, they're, they're very, very smart. Very, very smart. I think they're smarter than humans, actually. Let me know if you got a pet monkey down below because i be thinking it's cute but till they get like big big and they get really 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 smart mm -mm, it's kind of scary but but to t train the monkey to get women that's crazy Smith, Scatter also drank heavily. Quote, he could down a fifth of liquor before you knew it. Smith remembered another time when Scatter was beaten by a woman at a party for misbehaving. There oh. have been conflicting reports about what really happened to the chimp. Some state that he merely lost his life due to old age, but Smith speculated that Scatter was poisoned by one of the maids who was tasked with feeding him after he was abandoned by Elvis and the crew who were oh. out on the road. Although it's unclear exactly how he passed, it appears as though Scatter That's took his crazy. last breath and that's scary. If you're a homeowner like, in Kentucky bro? and you're still paying for like, electricity, what, bro? and I've got breath on his own after years of living the party lifestyle. The whole thing was really rather sad as it seemed like Elvis and his friends used the chimp just to entertain themselves and discarded him when they went on tour. Number six, attacked his fiance. After Linda Thompson, Elvis briefly dated Mindy Miller before becoming involved with Ginger Alden, who was a full 20 years younger than him. It was only two months into their relationship when Elvis proposed to her and she accepted. The couple planned to walk down the aisle. Two months, that's crazy. A lot of people say when you know, you know, but two months as a wild and she was 20 years younger than him. Just a few months before Elvis's untimely death, and Alden even said how excited he was about their wedding and their future together as a couple. She revealed to Express that during his final days, quote, Elvis was looking forward to many things marriage, more children, serious films, and his next tour. But Elvis was reportedly very manipulative when it came to women and could be extremely jealous and controlling. Mm. According to sources close to the star at the time, he could get very violent. His treatment of her was horrifying, and the pair constantly argued argued during their time together. After one particular fight, he allegedly asked someone in his entourage to pop the tires on Alden's car so she couldn't leave his home. And on another occasion, when she was driving away after an argument, Elvis reportedly aimed his weapon at her car and fired. Number five, allegation- Child, do we believe that? I'm not saying it ain't true. I'm not saying it's not possible to be true, but danger. Sometimes fame gets to people here like it to where they, they feel like they have to be controlling like it of racism. Last year, Quincy Jones revealed to The Hollywood Reporter that he always refused to work with Elvis because he was a racist. The musician best known for producing Michael Jackson's albums, Thriller, Off the Wall, and Bad, made the comments about Elvis's supposed history of racism in his new interview. The outlet asked Jones about Presley after the producer compared Jackson to the king of rock and roll. The 88-year-old musician and producer described a time when he was writing for the orchestra leader Tommy Dorsey in the 50s, and Elvis came in saying quote i don't want to play with him jones went on to call elvis a racist and added quote but every time i saw elvis he was being coached by otis blackwell telling him how to sing and while there wasn't an overwhelming amount of accusations surrounding elvis's past racism there are certainly many allegations against the icon for appropriating black culture and repack i don't know if i agree with that because you elvis had a lot of soul you know what i'm saying he had a lot of black people around him and, I mean, 
that's just from me looking on the outside. But then again, we don't know how he acted around him type of thing. But I don't I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That's interesting. Pitching it to the general public as his own. Despite this, it's obvious that American society still allowed him to have a very successful career, whether it was something the lead singer did consciously or subconsciously. Number four, hidden children. Even though he has been gone for many, many years, Elvis Presley has always been the center of several new scandals and controversies. One of the many that have hit the headlines in the last few years is that the king of rock and roll supposedly kept hidden children from the rest of the world. The National Enquirer actually conducted a two-year investigation into the hidden children of the Presley family, reportedly acquiring witness testimonies, checking receipts, mail correspondence, birth certificates, and even DNA tests. The result of the investigation allegedly proves that Elvis did have several additional children that were being kept away from the spotlight of Hollywood. In fact, multiple alleged mothers of Elvis's hidden children have come forward to tell their stories about how they met the star, and the stories have some strange similarities. One example is Desiree Romain Presley who is the daughter of Lucy de Barbin, and she claims that her mother was in a 24-year-long relationship with Elvis and was being... Child, 24 years, and you was hidden that long, and y'all got kids? So, you know, we only know about one kid, right? And RIP to her. But I wonder how many more he had then kept away from the media. But the crazy thing is that Desiree's father is listed as Randolph Presley on her birth certificate, someone who allegedly worked at the Air Force Base in Oklahoma City. Number three, addicted to medication. It's not unheard of for celebrities to turn to substances as a way to cope with fame and just how crazy their lives become in the spotlight. But Elvis's alleged addictions could have had a very different origin when you look at the tragedy of his mother's passing. In 1958, he was drafted into the US Army and went to Germany, but had to return to the US less than six months later because of his mother's untimely death. Many people believe that this marked the beginning of the end for Elvis, who quickly headed down a path of self-destruction. As soon as he returned to Germany, it's reported that Elvis partied heavily and would often get into fights. During this time, he also started taking illegal substances to try and deal with the grief of losing his mother. This probably snowballed and it's assumed that from that moment on, the misuse of substances played a major role in his life. Linda Thompson wrote several examples in her memoir about these incidents and says that she often found Elvis passed out in a bowl of chicken noodle soup under the influence of sedatives. She even says that doctors tried to hospitalize him for two weeks after misusing a combination of medication for far too long. Number two, why... Pre Dang, that's sad. That's sad. You know what I'm saying? That's so sad. It's like somebody screaming for help, but nobody hears you, you know? But it's like, it's because I'm Elvis, that's why nobody's hearing me type of thing. Or they was too scared to tell you, like, you gotta calm down, you know? Priscilla ended things. Because she was only 14 years old when their courtship began, it's really no surprise that she missed out on a huge that. chunk of her adolescence. She told Jonathan Ross in 2015, quote, I was kind of lost, really in who I was earlier in my life. I really didn't have teenage years. After their first child, Lisa Marie, was born, Priscilla accused Elvis of not wanting to sleep with her after she had given birth. Elvis told her that he wanted her to recover, but Priscilla later wrote in her memoir that he had mentioned before they were married that he had never been able to make love with a woman who'd had a child. In fact, throughout their marriage, Elvis continued to cheat on Priscilla with other women, and she herself had her own affair with an owner of a dance studio. It's safe to say that their marriage never really recovered. They finalized their divorce in 1973, and she said that this was because her life was his life, which meant her problems were always going to be secondary. Years later, she admitted that she did not divorce him because she didn't love him, but because she had to find out about the world. She was clearly just way too young when they started seeing each other number one that made sense on her reasoning but where was her parents at why did they allow that to happen 14 you wild and i wish i would have had a daughter at 14 get married to a 50 60 year old i don't care how famous you are like what that's crazy dang erratic violence. In recent years, Linda Thompson has been pretty open about her time with Elvis Presley, stating, quote, we all knew how dangerous Elvis's rage could be. Apparently, when she first noticed Dang, Elvis could get pretty bad. angry was when someone reportedly stole personal photos of one of his ex-girlfriends with another woman. She claimed that he then decided to show off his samurai sword collection while under the influence of illegal substances and left her fearing for her life. Although mm. she said that he was true to his word and he didn't, in fact, 
hurt her. She was concerned because his talents were entirely impaired due to the narcotics. These were just some of the several times that his ex said that she worried about his boiling rage. Apparently, the musician even invested in a concealed carry permit to take the weapons on stage with him, including several that were actually stuffed into his shoes, just in case what? someone got a little bit too rowdy in the crowd. Even singer Tom Jones spoke about Elvis's love of weapons during a visit to his dressing room. Tom said that he noticed a loaded weapon just sat on the side and simply handed it to Elvis by wrapping it in a towel. Sounds a little crazy to me. Let us know what you think in the comments below. And Oof, that was a lot to take in. That was a lot to take in, but am I surprised? No, I don't, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. Um, like It's a lot of celebrities that go through that still to this day. That still act like that, that still go through that. And it's just sad because it's like, it's like fame can be very, very dangerous. And then once you get that fame, just stuff just comes running, running to you, falling in your lap, you know? So it's like, even if you try to get yourself away from those things, you're still known to this person, this entertainer. So it's like, I don't know how to explain it, but it's, it's sad. It's, whew, that's why I always say, make me rich, don't make me famous, <laughs> for real. But y'all gotta let me know about um, some of these dark secrets Elvis had. Let me know if you if you knew about them or if you didn't. Um, I guess just let me know your thoughts in general. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and you made it to the end with me. Let me know any other videos like, any other videos you'd like to see me do. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and push the notification bell. With that being said, see you guys next video.